Don't just read the word. Be the word. Bible says that you are a living epistle. So don't just read the word. Be the word. If you just read the word, it's literature. If you be the word, it's scripture. If you just read the word, it's literature. If you be the word, it's scripture. You are a living epistle. So you don't just read the word. You be the word. Jesus Christ was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. He was the word. Jesus was the word. Is the word. And is always the word. He wasn't just a word reader. He was a word liver. So for you to just read the word is literature. Anybody can do literature. But you to be the word is scripture. The word has to be engraved in you as a literal part of your person. You are incomplete before God until you are considered as the word. By faith we believe that everything and all things were framed by the word of God. Don't just read the word. Be the word. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2 to 3. Keep my commandment and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Number three, bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of your heart. Therefore, the word is not just on the pages of of a book. The words are on the tables of your heart. It's a component of your anatomy. It's a component of your system. It's a component of your supernatural and natural biology. It's a component of your chemistry. Bind them to your fingers and engrave them upon the table of your heart. He's not saying just carry the words on scripts and papers. He's saying be that word. The devil sees you. He says that's the word of God. When the challenges of life sees you, that's the word of God. When impossibilities see you, they say that's the word of God. You are the word in person and not just the word on paper. Therefore, I can also say that the writing, that the writing of God is not designed to be just on papers, but on people. God is not writing scriptures in this generation with pen. He's writing scriptures with personality. It's the ink of your person by which he is inscribing the text of the word for our time and for our generation. People will read you. Demons will read you. They will be reading you. It's you they will be reading. We've gone past the eras of scrolls. We just strolled past scrolls. We've moved into the eras of people. Where now the Bible carrying templates is in your heart. And God is writing words for this time. Not just with pens, but with persons. And not just on papers, but on people. You be 
the world. Because when you begin to do that, think about Jesus Christ. Your life is purely a manifestation of what is written for you, about you, and in you. Your word, your life, your entire encounter, your entire experience, your whole encounter, and your whole experience is based upon what is written about you, what is written for you, and what is written in you. It's important for you to identify with the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Somebody say in me. In. So it's about what is in. You see, it's not about the volumes of the text in the Bible you carry in your hand. It's about the volume of the text that you carry in the words inscribed in your heart. People don't overcome the tests of life with just the text on the textbook. You overcome the tests of life with the test written in your heart. Thy words have I written in my heart, inscribed upon my heart, that I will not sin. Therefore, the effective word is not the one on the scroll. The effective one is the one in the heart. It's not the one on the scroll, but on the one on the soul. The words on the scroll can be rolled off and kept aside. But the words on the soul, it protects the man. It builds the man. It, is, it secures the man. Therefore, scriptures are not designed to live on scrolls. They are designed to live in souls. And so the light shouldn't be shining from the pages of a book on your shelf. The light should be shining from the personality of yourself. Did I say something to somebody there? So if the word is in you, the light shines from yourself and not from the shelf or the books on the shelf or the pages on the shelf or the scripts on the shelf. It shines out from yourself. Poverty will lose its grip when you shine. The word in you releases light. The light expels the dark. Every man who lives in the dark lives in luck. Nobody lives in the light and encounters the luck. For the luck is in the dark. When a man lives in the dark, he does not find where even his food is. If a place is 100% dark, he finds it difficult to even locate his refrigerator. He can't even tell where he kept the bottle of malt. He groups in the dark searching for what he's going to eat. Even when it, it's available in the atmosphere. When somebody is in 100% pitch darkness. The person can cook a meal. You can fry plantain in pitch darkness. Without dipping your hands in the oil and getting your skin scorched. So anybody who lives in the dark lives in luck. Even in the face of plenty, when the light shines from within you, it reveals an understanding, it reveals a knowledge base, intelligence, it releases everything that is required to make you move into abundance. It's time for you to shine. Amen. Unleash your shine. Let your light so shine before men. It is not the light from some books, it is your light. You've got to know the difference. It is not the light that just comes only from the preacher's sermon. It is a light that is your light. Your light. Let your light. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. John made reference to a writing. He said, I have written unto you fathers because he have known him that is from the beginning I have written unto you young men because he is strong and the word of God abided in you and you 
hath overcome the wicked one. Somebody has a victory here. Yeah. The devil lost a battle against your life a long time ago. You are God's own special battle axe. The devil is a loser 24 hours of every day. He's got no grip on your body. Got no grip on your womb. Got no grip on your soul. Got no grip on your brain. Got no grip on your intelligence. Got no grip in any part of you. Got no grip on your life because you have been liberated. I write to you. I write to you. It's by this writing that you discover and identify and get to know who you are. You see, you're not going to be among the people just complaining and just complaining and just complaining. You will be among the people solving and solving and solving, fixing and fixing and fixing, restoring and restoring and restoring, changing and changing and changing, transforming and transforming and transforming. You are the hero of this time. So I write to you because you're strong. Be word strong. <laughs> Be word strong. Your strength doesn't come from lifting up weights. Your, weight, your strength doesn't come from the sizes of your biceps. You are word strong. Because sometimes people, some folks can lift up great weights and have huge biceps. And then when they have emotional attacks and confrontations, they begin to break down and sober. In the midst of it, their muscles can handle emotional stresses. Their muscles can handle financial difficulties. The Bible says that if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. So a huge man with big biceps and six-pack stomach who cannot stand emotional difficulties, who cannot stand financial challenges, who cannot stand psychological challenges, who cannot stand mental challenges, that man is not even strong. So you're not weight strong. Be word strong. The man with the big biceps and six packs is weight strong, but is not word strong. He said, I write to you, young men, because you're strong. So stay strong always. Because your framework when God made you was built upon bones, not tread. Was built upon bones. God had to put together a skeleton to hold you and firm. Stand. Look at somebody and say, stand. God wants you to keep standing strong and stay firm. Oh, we shared the scripture with the women when we talked about when we were having our prayers. And we said, by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive and she was delivered of a child because she considered him faithful that promise by faith what is the source of faith the word oh come on the word is the source of faith faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God and by faith Sarah received strength he said I write to you young men because you are what strong what gives you that confidence? Because there is a word in you. And the word produces faith. And the faith produces strength. And the strength produces conception. And the conception produces delivery. Delivery produces a child of destiny. A child of destiny produces a messiah. Somebody's listening to what I'm trying to say here. It begins by the word in you. Hmm. So the more this generation continues to eat the word, the stronger this generation will become. So I'm writing to you because you're strong. So how do we know that? We know it by the fact that when you sit in church like you do today, you get fed with the real word of God. Because it's the word in you that makes the difference. How did the psalmist declare himself as a youth? He came out and he said, hey, he satisfies my mouth with good things. My youth is renewed as an eagle. So if you keep eating the word of God, eat well, good scriptures, good revelation, good insight. It makes you youthful, making you strong forever. The word is in you, making you strong enough to possess. Hope I'm talking to somebody be word strong, not weight strong.
It isn't about what you were able to lift. It's about what you're able to leave. <laughs> it's in the manifestation. I told you when I started, I said that if the word is just in the book, it's literature. But when the word is in you, it's scripture. Of course, a word in you makes you a sanctuary when it's alive. A word in you makes you a mortuary when it's dead. Can I have somebody say the word in you? So what is the state of the word in you? What is the current state and situation of the word in you? The life of every true believer must reflect the word. You see, you grow in relationship to the kind of food you eat. Isn't that so? Nobody works in a factory because he's a bookseller. <laughs> so can you do the job? Yeah. How do you know you can do the job? Because I sell books. Because you sell books. I might not sell books, but do I have the books in here? The job is for the one with the book in the inside, not the book on the shelves. And like I said, it's not about what is on the shelf, but what is in yourself. Again, I write to you because you have overcome the wicked one. You see, when the moment you understand that you are the word, you can force the devil out of your life. Understanding that you are the word can force the devil out of your life, out of your world entirely. The word completely dispels and expels the devil from your world. The word frames your world. So it is the word that determines what is contained in your world. I see a redesign. I see a redesigning. It is the content of the word power and the intelligence and understanding you possess that transforms your world. According to a million huge books, don't change it. If the content of the book is not in the man, the content of the book cannot make the man. It is only the factors and the content of a book in a man that makes the man. And it's only the volume of word from the book in the man that makes the man that can make the man's world. Say, so follow me and I will make you. The word says, follow me, I will make you. The word says, follow me, I will do what? And I will make you. The word says, follow me, and I will do what? I will make you. Grace and Spirit speaks that you have already overcome. And not that you will overcome. Say, I am writing to you. Because you have overcome. Oh, somebody knows that. That the word carries. So I'm writing to you because you have overcome. Some kind of a past tense with power there. I move with the confidence that is well already. It is well. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God is in charge. You're not trying to beg God for a victory. God's writing to you because his word is in you and God is telling you you already have Victory. Amen. God ain't trying to give you a testimony. God is telling you to look around carefully. You already have a testimony. Amen. You already have a promotion. You already have a new job. You already have a lifting. You already have a relationship. You already have a marriage. You're already pregnant. Your baby is already developed. Your child is in your hand. Your car is in your hand. Your everything, your job, your business, you've got it already. 
2 Corinthians 3, 3, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. Hey, oh, come on somebody. The Bible says you are the scripture. Are you with me now? You have manifestly declared to be the scripture. So where is the scripture? You are the scripture. You are the scripture. The word is no longer on the scroll but in your soul. I said you are the scripture. The word is not just on the shelf but in yourself. You are the scripture. Is somebody with me here? It says there in the text, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, what? Ministered by us, written not with ink. I've told you that God ain't writing this with a pen anymore. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. How many of us got the Holy Ghost in this place? Oh my God. <laughs> See the words that I speak unto you, what did Jesus say they are? The words that I speak unto you, what did Jesus say they are? He said they are spirit and they are life. How many of you have been listening to me the next few minutes? You have been receiving the living spirit. <laughs> it makes you an epistle. Ministered by us. So as I'm ministering to you now, I am making you more of a Bible. Come on, somebody, you are becoming a scripture, yeah? The word of God is not just written on papers. The word of God is written on people. It's written on you. It's written on me. It's written on us. This word in me. You are the scripture. Whenever you say it is written, you're talking about it's you. <laughs> I am written. I write unto you because the devil is about to encounter your fulfillment. Amen. You will be fulfilled. Raise your hand and say, the writing is in me. The writing is in me. The writing is in me. The word is in me. The scripture is in me. The pronouncement is in me. The announcement is in me. You are the scripture. You are the Bible. You are the Bible. Some people go, oh, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. Yeah, you also, also listen to what I'm saying here. When Paul, in his time, was quoting the Old Testament, sometimes he would say, I, Paul, say this. And those things that Paul said, I, Paul said, we are today quoting them as what? As scriptures. Those were words from Paul that came from Paul, and we know them as scriptures today. I want to let you know that when you speak, you are also releasing scriptures. They came to John the Baptist and they asked John the Baptist, who are you? You see, you're looking at me. Why did God put me in this generation? Why am I here? What am I to do? Why am I in this family? Why am I here? John the Baptist, who are you? John the Baptist looked at them and said, I am the voice of him that cries in the wilderness. I am the voice. I am the voice. See, I am a scripture. I am a voice. I am the one you've got to listen to. Nature will hear you. People will hear you. Government will hear you. Men will hear you. Circumstances will hear you. The things will hear you. You've got to know you are the scripture, the voice of this time. Your body, your system, your mind, everything's got to listen to you. The word is inscribed in your person.